الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده اللهم يا مفتح الأبواب ويا مسبب الأسباب ويا دليل الحائرين توكلت عليك يا رب العالمين ووفوض عمري لله إن الله بصير ملبال أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذا قال عيسى بن مريم يا بني إسرائيل إني رسول الله إليكم مصدقا لما بين يدي من التوراة ومبشرا برسول يأتي من بعد اسمه أحمد فلما جاءهم بالبينات قالوا هذا سحر مبين صدق الله صدق الله مرة نزيل Mr. Chairman and Brethren I think the MC forgot to tell you the subject of this evening's talk. The subject is Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the natural successor to Christ. May peace be upon him. Successions are of many kinds. One is a succession by inheritance. The father or the king, he passes away and his son takes his position, uh, position. Or a president or the prime minister is elected or selected by election. A, a manager of an institution is appointed and on and on. But when it comes to prophethood, Nubuwat, Nubuwat is not something that one inherits or people can by show of hands vote a person to become a Nabi, a prophet. Prophethood is bestowed upon an individual by Allah himself. And he uses his own standards of appointing his messengers, his representatives, his mouthpieces. Mankind would have so many reasons to complain. Like for example, Allah Bari Ta'ala chose Hazrat Musa alayhi salam to be his mouthpiece to the Bani Israel. But Hazrat Musa alayhi salam had a certain defect in speech. He used to stutter. Allah chose him. Why didn't he choose the most eloquent person of the time? No, that's his business. Allah knows why he chose Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. Allah Bari Ta'ala in time chose Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. A person who couldn't point to his father, said, look, this is my father. For that reason, the Jews made certain allegations against Maryam alayhi salam and Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. That's his choice. Allah chose Hazrat Isa alayhi salam without a human father that he can point to. Ki ye mera baap hai. Allah Bari Ta'ala chose our Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. An ummi, a person who couldn't read or write. A child who was doubly orphaned by the time he was six. No political party or royalty to back him up. And he picks this human being and he elevates him to become, as Allah says, وَإِنَّكَ لَا عَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَزِيمٍ says, most certainly, thou O Muhammad, stand us on the highest pinnacle of behavior. This is Allah's works, Allah's doing. But this evening, I will be dealing with the subject of our Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa being a successor to Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. The Christians call him Jesus Christ. I have been reading some complaints from Christian missionaries. I had one, I read one from a Christian in, in Islamabad, in the newspaper called Muslim. This Christian started to complain, he said, look, Didat, he says, why doesn't he leave us alone? <coughs> Let him talk about Islam. You know that you must pray five times a day, you, we Muslims are not praying five times a day, you know, we don't do this and we don't do that, we don't keep beards and on and on. Talk to the Muslims, tell them about Islam. Why do you want to talk about us? Leave us alone. 
And in this morning's jang, there is some Reverend Wilson of some Christian association. He's also making a similar complaint. Leave us alone. Talk to your own people. They are not perfect. And that is so. We are not perfect. Talk to them. You see, I don't know somehow they escape the point that we are so closely related to the previous two religions, the religion as given by through Hazrat Musa salam, and that religion given by through Hazrat Isa salam. We are so close. We are the closest in history to Christianity or the teaching of Hazrat Isa salam. Closest. And one third of the Quran, one third of the Quran speaks about the Ahl al-Kitab, one third. If you analyze the Quran, separate it into different types of verses, one third is dedicated, directed towards the Jews and the Christians. But unfortunately, we Muslims, somehow for almost a thousand years, have utterly neglected that one third. We do read the Quran, we recite the Quran, we do Khatmul Quran, we do Tarawih, and in which the Quran, the whole Quran is recited. But as far as the implementing of the message of that one third, we seem to have utterly neglected that. So the Christians now feel that Didat is the first guy coming along. He's as if some, somewhere from thin air, he's pulling things and he's creating controversies, unnecessary controversies. But I want to assure them, and I want to assure you, that what I'm talking is Islam. I quoted to you a verse from the Holy Quran, from Surah Saf, S-A-F-F -F in English, Saf, chapter 61, verse ayah number 6. And I read to you, those who understand Arabic would have known that I'm talking to you about Hazrat Isa a.s. Allah says, وَإِسَ قَالَ عِيسَ بْنُ مَرْيَمَ Behold, Isa, the Christians say Jesus, the son of Mary, he said, Ya Bani Israela, O children of Israel, O Jews, Bani Israel ke bachyo, Yaqub alayhi salam ke awlaad, Ya Bani Israela, inni Rasulullahi ilaykum. So most certainly, I am the messenger of God sent to you all. Musaddiqan lima bayna yadayya min al-Tawrati. Confirming the revelation, the wahi that came before me in the Tawrat. Wa mubashiran bi rasuli ya'ti min ba'dismuhu ahmad. And giving glad tidings of a messenger to come after me, an apostle to come after me, whose name shall be Ahmad. Falamma jahum bil bayinati. But when he came with clear-cut evidence, they said, this is sorcery, magic, this is trickery. Now, this is an ayah of the Quran, which I am going to explain. I will be giving you my commentary. But while I am giving you this commentary, according to my background and experience, to the Christians, they say, look, man, why are you touching my book? References from my book. It can be helped. There is a relationship. There is a connection between our Hazrat Isa alayhi salam who foretold about the coming of our Nabi. So I must try and prove it to you. Where? Because it's very easy to make a claim. You say, look, Hazrat Musa alayhi salam made Basharat prophecy about our Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam. Hazrat Isa alayhi salam made Basharat prophecy about our Nabi alayhi salam. Al very easy to make such bold statements, generalizations. But the Christian will ask us, is a way, way. So you can't help it, you have to prove it to him from his own book. Look at this, look at that, and we prove our case. So actually, this talk of mine is a commentary, is a tafsir on this ayah that I read to you from Surah Saf. Now if you have a translation, like this particular one I have, this is by Abdullah Yusuf Ali. This was first published around 1935 in Lahore by Sheikh Muhammad Ashraf, Ashraf Publications. And in this translation, it has so many advantages. This ayah I quoted you, 
I read to you. There are three different ways of getting at it, finding it in this book. At home in the Quran that you might have at home, it'll be difficult. Especially for us known Arabs, as a Surah Saf. Where are you going to find Surah Saf in an encyclopedia of this size? Where? In this particular one, it has an index at the back, just like a dictionary. You open that index and under S, you look for Saf. S-A-F-F, -F -F, Saf. It'll tell you 61. Surah number 61, chapter 61. So 61 would be easy to find because every page is numbered. Surah number 50, 60, 61, easy to find. I said verse number 6, ayah number 6. Once you found 61, 6 is also easy to find. That's one way of checking up what I'm telling you, that I'm reading the Quran to you and I'm giving you my tafsir on that verse. Number two, if you want to find that verse again, there is a subject Jesus in the index. Jesus, Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. Open J and you find Jesus. And one of those subject matters under Jesus you'll find foretold the coming of Ahmad. Ahmad, which is another name for the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Ahmad, foretold Ahmad. And you say 61 verse 6. Chapter 61 verse 6. Then again, if you want to find that verse, under M, Muhammad, sallallahu under M, you'll find Muhammad, so many headings, what does the Quran say about Muhammad? And you'll say, foretold by Moses, chapter so-and-so, so-and-so, foretold by Jesus, chapter 61, verse 6. Three different ways you can find this ayah in the Quran. And you owe it to yourself to find it, check it up, learn it, and use it. I said for almost a thousand years, we are not touching these verses. One third of the Quran, we are not using it. We read it all right, but we are not implementing any part of that message. Therefore, the Christians say that this Didat fellow is bringing something new in Pakistan. No Muslim was talking about these things and where does this guy come from? He's not trying to create a controversy in the country. We don't want any controversies. We are only delivering the message. So Allah says, Wa is qala Isa ibn Maryama, behold, behold, Jesus, the son of Mary, said, Ya Bani Israela, O children of Israel, inni Rasulullahi ilaykum. Most certainly, I am the messenger of God sent to you, the Jews. He was sent to the Jews. Now we have to prove it. This is what the Quran says. But the Christian says Jesus came for the whole of mankind. He came for the whole world. Allah says that he was sent for the Jews. So what we have to do now to prove our case, what we are telling that the Quran is correct, 100% in what it says. We have to take his book, his Burhan, his proof, the Bible. This is the Bible. You can't help. If he says, where? So you have to show him proof from his own book. So you read in the so-called New Testament, you see this Bible is divided into two parts. Bible means a book, kitab. This book is divided into two parts, Old Testament and New Testament. Old is everything before Jesus and new is everything after Jesus. In the New Testament, we are told that Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, tells his disciples, his Hawariyun, his Sahabas. He says, in the Gospel of St. Matthews, he said, Go ye not into the way of the Gentiles. Gentiles means non-Jews. Go ye not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. But go ye rather unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel, Bani Israel. Go only to those who are lost among the Bani Israel. There it is. He's directing his people, leave the non-Jews alone. Then he says, he says, do not throw that which is holy unto dogs. Do not throw pearls before swine. These are the words of Hazrat Isa salam, as recorded in this holy book. The occasion is that a Greek woman she comes to him with her daughter. She had an incurable sickness. 
and she had heard about the reputation of this mighty messenger of God, Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, that he was a miracle worker, performing miracles, mojiza. So she, she comes to Hazrat Isa alayhi salam and wants her daughter to be healed. So he turns his face away. So she goes to the other side. He turns his face away, away from the woman. So the disciples of Jesus, they said, look, this woman, she won't let us go. You see, after all, her daughter is, is sick, serious, and drowning men clutches, clutches at straws, and drowning women do the same, that now she has some hope in you, please do her a favor. So he says, I'm not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Sir, Bani Israel ke liye hi mein aya when they persuade him further, he says, Do not throw the bread of the children to the dogs. But choka khana, roti, kutto kumat dalo. I'm asking, who are the dogs? Because he's not talking about material bread made of flour. He's talking about spiritual blessings. That is the bread he's talking about. She wants that blessing, not food. This is what is supposed to be written. This is said in the Christian holy scriptures. Do not throw the bread of the children to the dogs. Now the woman in desperation, she says to Jesus, according to the Bible, he says, Lord, even the dogs have crumbs from the master's table. So Jesus says, give her the crumbs, crumbs. And the child is healed. So in his lifetime, he himself never preached to a single non-Jew. Not a single non-Jew was ever converted to his faith, not one. This is their own record. The first person who, out of the Gentiles who became a Christian was a fellow by the name of Cornelius, and it was decades after Jesus passed this way. In his lifetime, among the twelve disciples, not one was a non-Jew, not one. And in his lifetime, not a single non-Jew was converted. That is the record. So the Quran says, he says, Allah sent him to the Bani Israel, 100% correct telling with what the Bible says. What they interpret now that he came for the whole world, mankind, say, look, think as you like, say what you like, but this is your written record. Your Burhan tells us that he only came for the Jews. Confirming the revelation which came before me. Musaddiqan lima bayna yadayya minat tawrati. Tawrat. In Hebrew, Torah means the law. Torah, Torah in Hebrew, Torah, Torah, I'm sorry, Torah in Arabic, Torah. In Hebrew, Torah, Torah in Hebrew means law. So it says confirming the law. I'm reading from the English Bible. The word law in Hebrew is Torah. That came before me. Again, we go to the book. Whether that is so, that he came to confirm the law which came before him. So he says, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, or shall teach men so, shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall teach and do, shall be called great. He's confirming again this Quranic statement that he came to confirm the Torah. He brought nothing new, so he says. And now we come to the main part of that verse, which we are going to expound. And giving glad tidings, good news, of a messenger to come after me, whose name shall be Ahmad, which is another name for Muhammad. So we said, look, this was a prophecy, Basharat, made by Hazrat Isa alayhi salam in his lifetime. And the Christian will tell you, <laughs> there is nothing like that in my book. So now you are forced to. As I say, you, you people, man, you pull it out of thin air, you concoct things, and you create something, and you thumb suck it, you know, very nice. You say, it's there, it's there. There is nothing like that in my book. So Allah Bari Tala had given us instructions in the Quran, which we have not been following. Allah says, anything the other man claims, tell him, pull. Tell him, say, how to burhanakum. Produce your evidence. In kuntum sadiqin, if you are speaking the truth, let us have a look at your proof. Now he is asking you for proof. 
we are supposed to be asking him with regards to any claim he makes since we haven't done the job for a thousand years we stop asking them for any proof so now he's asking you where Kaha hai? so we are forced to go to the book despite the fact that they have not preserved it the teaching of Hazrat Isa are not preserved the New Testament is not the Injil but there are certain words and expressions sayings and doings which are recorded in there so we go to it and in the Gospel of Saint John there is a book called John Saint John in the New Testament chapter 16 verse 7 we are dealing with that to show that Hazrat Isa alayhi salam did speak about our Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he did foretell that there is one coming after me and he did say Ismuhu Ahmad so we go to John chapter 16 verse 7 and it reads in English nevertheless I tell you the truth he's telling his disciples nevertheless I tell you the truth it is expedient for you it is better for you that I go away for if I go not away the comforter will not come unto you but if I go I will send him to me this is the nearest to Mimbada Ismuhu Ahmad so I said you see this Hazrat Isa alayhi salam is talking about Ahmad which is another name for Muhammad he says the comforter will not come unto you but if I go I will send him he will come after I'm gone so he says no there's no Ahmad there there is no Muhammad there the word there in the English Bible is comforter the latest Bible say helper okay comforter helper counselor anything but the word is comforter so how does it fit Muhammad that he said you said he said Ahmad he said Muhammad this is comforter so I'm asking the Christian which you can do the same this Bible I we are reading is in English he said yes the word comforter is an English word he said yes I'm asking did Jesus speak English they said no then so what did he say look tell me what did he say this is English word comforter because in the Afrikaans Bible the people who are ruling my in my country Africana is a type of low Dutch they speak called Afrikaans in the Afrikaans Bible the word is through a star I'm asking did you speak Afrikaans they said no I said what did he say in the Zulu Bible it says um, towards you see. I said did you speak Zulu your Jesus did you speak Zulu he says no then he says what did he say in the Greek he says parakletos I said did you speak Greek he says no I said what did he say look so easy what did he say because this is the, the Bible today this Bible is available in 2,000 different languages of the world 2,000 different languages and in the 2,000 different languages there are 2,000 different words 2,000 different words in the Arabic Bible it says Lakinni akulu lakumul haqqu innahu khairul lakum in antalika li allahu illam antalik la yatikumul muazzi walakin in zahabtu ursilhu ilaykum he says muazzi in Arabic Bible I said did you speak Arabic? he says no <laughs> what did he say? no it's so easy wallah it is nice you know look it's such a joyful occupation pastime hobby you know you you can play marbles with them they are playing marbles with us they're making rings around us it's about time that we turn the tables I said, come come now talk man talk what did he say so the word is not there Ahmad is not there Muhammad is not there but he can't give you what did Jesus say so I said you see the Christians the early Christians they had a sickness the sickness was that they were translating names of people translating names which you have no right to do no man has a right to translate names our brother from the far end of our chairman you know 
It says, uh, uh, chapra. Chapra in my language means roof. Roof of the house, you know, chapra. <laughs> so, so it says, ah, that's how I remember. I'm trying to think, what's the name? So in association, in my mind, I'm associating with this, mm, what's, the, what's the name? Because look, I, ha I have a tendency to forget. Oh, we are getting old now. So I had to think of the roof. And then I found the word in my language, the chapra. Right. I said, Mr. Chapra. But instead of Mr. Chapra, I said, Mr. Roof. You know who I'm talking about? Mr. Roof. Huh? No, no, no. You have no right. Mr. Chapra remains Chapra. Mr. Kara remains Mr. Kara. Kara, hankete kala. We have in, among my people who are, have surname Kara. Kara. But an Englishman who is white, his surname is Black. Mr. Black. You can't say Mr. Kara. You can't say Mr. Aswad. Can you say? You can. You have no right to translate names of people. Mr. Black must be black, though he is white. You can't say he's Mr. White. He is black, but he's white. No, no, this. The Christians had this sickness of translating names. Now, this is not just I'm telling you. Proof, proof, proof. You must speak with proof. Don't make a fool of yourself. I said, you see, you say Jesus Christ. That is the name of your Lord, God, Savior. He said, yes, Jesus Christ. I said, you know, Jesus Christ never heard the word Jesus Christ in his life. It's an amazing situation. The name Jesus Christ was unheard by Jesus Christ. He never heard it in his life. If in his second coming, if he comes to Karachi, and if you recognize him, the Christians shout, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. I said, look, he won't even turn back to look at you. <laughs> Wallah, because he never heard the word in his life. When he was born, his mother gave him the name, the English Bible says Jesus. I said, that is not Hebrew. This man is a Jew, born Jew. His mother is a Jewess. And in the Jewish language, she gave him the name Esau. Esau. In Arabic, Isa. See, it's the Arabic version of Esau is Isa. Classical Esau is Yeshua. But the Christians, they did not like a Jewish name for the God. See, Esau sounds Jew. Esau, Esau is Jew, Jew, Jew. They didn't want the God to be a Jew. So what they did was, they Latinized it by adding a J, G, it became Esau, it became Jesus. They Latinized it. There's a Latinized form of the Hebrew word Esau. He only heard Esau, Esau, whenever people, school, children, when he went to school, they called him Esau, 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 not Jesus, Jesus, there's no Jesus. The Westerner has a tendency, the sickness of adding J's where there are no J's. Yusuf is Hebrew, Yusuf also Arabic. Name of Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam. So they add a J, they make it Joseph. Must add a J. Yaqub, they say Jacob. No, no, no. Where there is no J, they put a J to Latinize the name sounding like a European. It sounds like a Greek or a Roman when you add a J. But Yusuf sounds Jewish or Arabic. Yaqub sounds Jewish or Arabic. So, but the heroes, you can't have Jewish names. So they Latinize them. Wherever there is no J, they put a J. 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 In my country, this sickness called J sickness. You see, it's a sickness, it's a type of sickness. In my country, they can charge you for jaywalking. I don't know whether you have any law here in Karachi. You see, when, if there is a robo against you, and if you just cross the street, you know, willy-nilly, you just cross the street, and if the policeman on the other side, he can charge you for what is called jaywalking. These people have jaywalked into names of people. Everywhere, no jay, maro jay, jay lagao. And so Jesus naturally says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. 
For he shall not speak from himself. But what things shall he hear? That shall he speak. And he shall declare unto you the things that are to come. He shall glorify me. I'm telling, I said, look, let me reread that verse with a little emphasis on the pronouns. And you will see that he's not talking about a spirit, a ghost, a spook. He's speaking about a man, a man, a man. Listen. He says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How beat? Watch my fingers. When he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak from himself. But what things shall he hear, that shall he speak, and he shall declare unto you the things that are to come, he shall glorify me. Eight masculine pronouns in one verse. Eight. He, 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 mard hai, mard, mard, mard. I said, it ill befits a ghost, a spirit, a spook, to call it he, 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 he. Now when this thing was in the early days of the British conquest, when this was, you know, Muslims were mooting this idea, so the Christians in the Urdu Bible, they changed he, he, he to she, she, she. <laughs> so you can't say Muhammad is a she, can you? No, so to puncture you, puncture us. Sure. So, we said, you see, it's talking about a man, not a ghost, not a spook. <coughs> Rereading again. I have yet many things to say unto you. I said, many in English more than one, means more than one. And they agree. Many in English means more than one. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. I said, all in English also means more than one. Many is more than one. All means more than one. That's basic English. So, I said, look man, you say that this spirit of truth was the Holy Ghost. He said, yes. Where is it? He said, every church claims he's got it. The Roman Catholic Church said, we got the Holy Ghost. Ruhul Quds unki saath hai. The Seventh-day Adventists say they got the Holy Ghost. Jehovah's Witness say they got the Holy Ghost. The Methodists say they got the Holy Ghost. The Presbyterian, there are 1,000 different sects and denominations among the whites of South Africa. They all claim to have the Holy Ghost. 3,000 among the blacks of South Africa, they all claim they got the Holy Ghost. I said, consider, you have it. I said, look, you got the Holy Ghost for 2,000 years. And Jesus said he's going to guide you into all truth. And he said, many things to say. I don't want two or three or four. I want only one new truth. One new fact. Which Jesus didn't give you in so many different words. Give me one. Which the Holy Ghost gave any church in 2,000 years. One. For more than the past 40 years, I have not come across a single Christian who can produce one new thing, not one. Ask your Christians in Pakistan whether they have it. Maybe, you know, the people in Pakistan or in the East, they seem to be geniuses. They have some type of special connection. Call them. Let's have one. We don't want many. We don't want too many. Jesus said, I have yet many things to say and all truth. We say, that spirit of truth is Muhammad. He guided mankind into all truth. All truth means solution to all your problems. That so you see, Hazrat Isa alayhi salam had given the news that this one who is coming after me, he will guide you into all truth, meaning solve all your problems. And there are so many problems abounding. In my country, Number one, the worst problem is the problem of race. Racism. Each and every one feels that he's better than the, his race is better than the other race. Racial problem. Then in America, you see I was there in America last October. I was debating with this uh, Christian missionary, Jimmy Swaggart. And this Jimmy Swaggart, he had published a number of books on alcohol and on gambling, on 
homosexuality, and on and on. He has printed more than 30 different booklets on different aspects, problems, problems, problems. And he speaks about the greatest problem in America, he says, is the problem of alcohol, drunkenness. And he gives a figure in his book. He says there are 11 million drunkards in America. 11 million drunkards, Pitta globe. And he says there are 44 million heavy drinkers. And, like a good Muslim, he says, I make no difference between the drunkard and the heavy drinker. To me, they are the same, as it will be the same to the Muslim. Whether you drink too much or you drink a little less, you are still breaking Allah's command. Pittak, pittak, pittak. So there are 55 million drunkards in America, according to Jimmy Swagger. What is the answer? He says in his book, The Preacher, that at a church conference of all the evangelists, preachers, they were trying to get the support from the preachers to say, people who are prepared to speak out against alcohol. And he says, in a few hundred preachers that were there, only a couple were opting for preaching against alcohol. The rest, they reasoned. They said, you see, our Lord Jesus, he turned water into wine at the marriage feast at Cana. If it was good enough for our God, it's good for us. Good logic. If it's good for your God, it's good for you. So as such, he says, look, we can't talk against it. Because Jesus turned water into wine. And they reason that that wine was not pure grey juice. Because, because, he says, when at that marriage feast, when people were drinking and drinking almost late into the night, and when they ran short, so the mother of Jesus comes to Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, according to the Bible. And he says, son, look, these people, you know, they have run short of wine. Do something, help them out of the problem. Buy some miracle, some mojiza. She's expecting her son to turn, do something magical to solve the problem. So Jesus tells his mother, he says, woman, that's what the Bible says. Woman, orat, what have I to do with you? What have I to do with thee? My time is not yet. Abhi mera time wakt nahi aya hai. And when she persuades him further, he turns water into wine. And since then, wine has flowed like water in Christian. This is a start. What is the answer? They have no answer. They have no answer. There are good people among them who don't touch alcohol at all. There are good people among them who don't even smoke cigarettes. Yes, again and again, some of them, they put us to shame. They come to our, our houses and you find the Muslim fellow, he can't resist and he must. As soon as he comes out of the masjid, he must pull it out and put it into his mouth. Nicotine, he can't do without nicotine. But there are Christians, you know, those who say they are born again, they don't touch alcohol, they don't dance, they don't go to the cinemas, they don't smoke. At least they show that. Spirit of sacrifice. So Christendom has no answer to alcohol because the Holy Ghost didn't tell them in 2000 years, don't touch alcohol. Though Hazar Baras were, not one church was told, don't touch alcohol. The answer Allah gives us in the Holy Quran, Four evils cut to the root with one ayah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ya ayyuhallazina amanu. So you who believe. Eman walo. Ya ayyuhallazina amanu. Innamal khamru. Most certainly intoxicants. Any intoxicant. Wal maisiru. And gambling. Wal ansabu. And fortune telling. Wal aslamu. And idol worship. Rizzum minamal shaitan. Are an abomination of Satan's handiwork. Fajtanibuhu la'allakum tuflihun. Sashan such abomination that he may prosper. And wine barrels were emptied in the streets of Medina. Never to be refilled. We can boast. We Muslims can boast. That we our is the biggest society of teetotalers in the world. People who don't imbibe alcohol. We have our drunkards. We have them. We have a fair share. 
of the good and the bad to be found in every other religious group. But as a people, as a whole, we are a people least consumption of alcohol in the world. Muslims as a people, as a whole. They haven't got an answer. They have a problem of surplus women. There are 7.8 million more women in America than men. And total number of women, unmarried women in America, 20 million women without husbands. But if every man in America got married, which will never happen, every man, every male gets married, there will still be 7.8 million women left who can't get husbands. In the city of New York alone, there are one million more women than men. In one city, city of New York, one million more women than men. And of the manpower they have there, in that city, one third are gays. Gays. It's a beautiful word. Gay. You know what they mean? Qawmi Lut. Qawmi Lut, Allah destroyed them. For the unnatural lust, Allah destroyed them. They call them gays. Homosexuals. They call them gays. They give a beautiful name. Beautiful word. They prostituted. Beautiful word. You see, when I was at school, in my school days, we were learning poetry. English poetry. And in which I was rhyming, gentle lords and ladies gay on the mountain dawns the day. <laughs> lords and ladies gay, khush mijaj, khush mijaj, jay, joyous and happy and gay. We are always talking happy and gay, he's happy and gay. But today, if he said that our chairman is happy and gay, he's got other meanings. <laughs> So Allah Allah gives them a whack. He gives them what is called acquired immune deficiency syndrome. Sickness. That Allah Allah, when you do that, Allah punishes you. He punishes you with a sickness that makes the body without resistance. Anything comes, any sickness, the body can't fight. Allah Allah has made in this mechanism every human being that any outside germ influenced by microbe that gets into the body, the body fights and put things right. Sometimes there's a fever, means the fight is heavy. There's a fever and there's a fever. In other words, the battle is going on until the body overcomes the sickness and the fever goes. This is how Allah made each and every human being. But you indulge in that sin of Qawm Lut, the Sodomites, Catamites, Allah strikes them with AIDS. Imagine, AIDS. Beautiful word. Again, prostituted. AIDS. We have Muslim aid, you know? You know every, yes. Some of the very few people, there are some 72 Christian agencies working among them, Mujahideen. Christian agencies in the guise of uh, medic, medication and social welfare and help. They are trying to Christianize our brethren. 72 agencies are at work. And only nine Mus Muslim bodies. Nine. And one of them is called Muslim Aid. You know, as soon as the outside world is Muslim Aid, the word you know, takes you off onto that other field. What is the solution? 20 million women can't get husbands. One third of the people in New York are gay, sodomites, Qawmilut. And the prison population, 98% of the people in prison are males. And man gets cold feet for so many different reasons. You know, he wants to marry, young man. He says, what's wrong? Come, I'll take you. Mr. Didat ki ladki bahut achi Come, I'll come and show you. Take you. He says, yes, yes, he wants to marry. And you take him there, and something happens before long. Let's say he gets cold feet. Kuch kuch bahane, pusal jata hai. How many of our young men sitting here are not married? Why? Somehow they think they can't make the grade. So, human beings all over, it's the same. You think you might not make the grade. But a woman for anything, says even she is frigid, she wants a husband. Somebody to give her protection. But man gets cold feet again and again. The problem is getting worse. What is the answer? 
Allah Bari Ta'ala gives the answer. In this last and final messenger of God, in the Holy Quran, he says, Marry women of your choice by twos and threes or fours, but if you cannot do justice between them, marry only one. The only religious book on the face of the earth which has the expression, marry only one, is the Quran. Polygamy was prevalent in the time of Jesus. He never spoke a word against it. Slavery was prevalent in the time of Jesus. He didn't speak one word against it. He left it to somebody else and that somebody is the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, I have yet. He said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. We are claiming that Allah Ta'ala has given us Solution to all your problems. Bring them and in the teachings, in the direct teachings of the Quran or the sayings of the Prophet ﷺ, you will have an answer to your problem. It might not go down well. You know, we are used to certain ways of life, certain standards. It might not go down well. But I said, if you do not accept the solutions given here, then you simmer in your soup. You see, the Westerner is always ready to laugh at us. When you meet a Westerner, <laughs> he says, how many wives have you got? You know, because at the back of the mind, he says, man, you got a harem, harem, you know. So many women in the house, how many? In my case, I said, look, I got only one. I'm married for more than 40 years now, and uh, I'm quite happy, I'm satisfied. I have only one. But this is always a standing joke. How many wives you got? The Arab, how many wives you got? The poor fellow, sometimes might not have even one. But he says, how many? <laughs> how many? How many wives you got? They, it's a big joke. Because Islam allows polygamy, limited polygamy, up to four. I said, you know, it's an answer to your problem. You don't listen to what Allah is telling you, then you do all the unnatural things. You have your lesbians. Last June, last June, 300,000 sodomites, Qawmilut. They call them gays. They gathered in San Francisco, teen lakh. In San Francisco on a pilgrimage, Hajj Karan in the Hajj. In San Francisco. Led by 50 lesbians on motorcycles. But that nation is worried about you and me. He says, you're going to go to hell. They want to save us from hellfire. So they're sending the missionaries at the moment out of the world. 70,000 full-time crusaders, mujahids of Christianity, 60% are Americans. Work it out, 42,000 Americans are raising the dust throughout the world, wanting to save you from hellfire. They are in hell themselves. With 55 million drunkards, 20 million women who can't get husbands, absolute hell. I'm telling my Arab brothers jokingly, you know when I'm there I keep on telling them jokingly. But sometimes many a serious thing they say I said in jest. Haste haste, I'm serious cheat bol dete. So I tell the Arabs, I said, look man, you know you people keep on running to Bombay, running to Beirut, now running to Bangkok. I said, look, go to America. I said, help the poor Americans. Look, in New York, and from the East Coast, New York got one million more women than men. They can't get husbands. I said, look, you all bring four for each. Cha <laughs> And your country is sparsely populated. Hardly any people in the country. Desert country, no people. I said, man, if you can't propagate Islam, procreate. Bache paida karo. But nobody is following my advice. You see, my dear brothers, in the teachings of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam, and the teaching of Islam, there is a gradual evolution. And in that evolution of the teachings of religion, Islam is the culminating point, the final point. Perfection has been reached in Islam. As Allah says, Al yawma akmaltu lakum deenukum. Says, this day I have perfected for you your religion. Wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati. And have completed my favors unto you. Wa raditu lakum al-Islam adina. And have willed that Islam should be your religion.
perfection. Let me give you an example. I said, you see, in the time of Hazrat Musa, according to the scriptures, the Jews had a law of divorce. A man can divorce his wife for so many reasons. What he had to do was, like we Muslims are doing now, you know, we say talak, talak, talak. They did, they said, look, I divorce you. In their language, they must have said talak. Go. So the poor woman, she goes back to her parents' home. And the man changes his mind. He says, no, man, that woman used to work like a donkey. You know, I can't get another worker so cheap. So he goes back to his father-in-law's, goes to his father-in-law's house, says, come on, dear, back home. So what for? So what do you mean, what for? She says, you divorced me. He says, no, I told you to go have a little holiday at your father's house. And now you want to get another husband. Come, come. Shh. Catches her by the hair and brings her back. He's going back on his word. So Hazrat Musa, a spiritual physician among the Jews, prophet of God, Allah guides him to give them, to tighten them, so he gives them a law. He says, whosoever puts away his wife, let him give her a bill of divorcement. Talak nama likkar tum dedo. Now, to straight jacket the man. You just can't say talak, and then you say, I didn't say talak. Put it down in writing. The Jews, our cousins, are very ingenious people. So they said, right, right, right. You see, the law says, whosoever puts away his wife, let him give her a bill of divorcement. Likkar dana hai. That's all. That's the necessary primary requisite is that you give it in writing. So, right. so the woman has got half a dozen children now. She's not the same anymore. Soft and flabby. He wants to get something nice and crisp. So he says, look, Hazrat Musa said, give her a bill of divorcement. So then he gets another one and he gets her into trouble and he wants to get rid of her. What does he do? He said, the law says, put it down into writing. So he puts it down into writing. He is within the law. The law says, Likkar do, Likkar dete hain. So, Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, another spiritual physician, a prophet of God among the Jews, he sees this abuse. So, he wants to tighten them. So, he says, it has been said by them of old time, Purane Jamane mein, aage kaha gaya hai, that whosoever puts away his wife, let him give her a bill of divorcement. But I say unto you, whosoever puts away his wife, except for the cause of fornication, causes her to commit adultery. And whosoever marries her that is divorced, committed adultery. No divorce whatsoever. And you can't marry a divorced woman. If you marry a divorced woman, your children are illegitimate. According to what Jesus said. Now he was only prescribing for the sickness of his people. This was not a panacea, a cure-all for eternity. Because he said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you can't bear it now. There's somebody coming after me. Who will guide you into all truth, everything that you want to know? But he is now prescribing for the sickness of his people. His people, according to what they say, they said, no, there's no divorce. Divorce is not allowed. But you have divorced by the millions. Divorced by the millions. Millions. The number of illegitimate children. Sicknesses by the millions. South Africa, my country, is boasting the second highest divorce rate in the world among the whites of the world. The gallant Danes, the Danish people, the Norwegians, they were beating the South Africans. Now the Americans are beating South Africa. But the second highest divorce rate in the world is South Africa today. And yet his book says no divorce. And if any divorced person gets married, he says he's committing adultery. You can't marry at all a divorced woman. So I said, come on now, how many of you, how many of you, somewhere along the line, because the Bible says, you see that once you are illegitimate, the Bible language, in the book of Deuteronomy, God is supposed to be saying that the bastard shall not enter the congregation of the Lord even unto the tenth generation. Look, this word bastard is in the Bible, in the King James Version. And I'm not using filthy, dirty language. This is the Holy Bible says the bastard shall not enter the congregation of the Haram Zada. Masjid mein nahi aayega. Das, das generation time. That's what the Bible says. 
So I'm asking, that means once you are a bastard, your 10 generation are bastards, according to that. So could they a single, I want to know if there is a single Christian who doesn't have that title. One, one. Look back your 10 generation, according to what it says. I, I don't know how true that thing is, but the Bible says that once you are a bastard, you are a bastard for 10 generations. Tomorrow, all out. This is generation that you remain a bastard. So, who is legitimate? I want to know whether Regan is or whether Mrs. Thatcher is. Who is legitimate? No. You see, there's something wrong somewhere. Something wrong somewhere. This teaching was a beautiful teaching Hazrat Isa al -Islam gave for a particular sickness. He is giving it and he's telling you that look, this is for you, for you, the Jews. This is not for mankind. For you, there's somebody else coming. For the whole of mankind who will guide you into all truth. And you can carry on divorce about the laws of retribution. Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, he said, So whosoever strikes you, he said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Beautiful law. A beautiful law for the nomadic people, moving from oasis to oasis in the desert. There was no time for lengthy litigations of putting a man in prison. An adulterer and the adulteress, the Bible says, stone them to death. That's what the Bible says. Stone them to death. There was no time for putting them out of the way. He said, look, you stay in the desert to die of hunger and thirst. It was more merciful to kill them. More merciful. And they become an object lesson for others. Don't you do that. See what happens? You do spoil somebody else's property. See what happens? Patthar se bar mar ka Shh, not for me. Everybody wants to see that horrible death. He said, no, not for me. It's an object lesson. Beautiful law. So Jesus Christ, you see, it, he says, it has been said, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her, had committed adultery with her already in his heart. O haram kor banga. Just by looking. So, you still have long leg contest, beauty contest, striptease contest. In Christian them, and they think nothing of it. It's nothing of it. They read these beautiful sermons, but reason. The reason is because Jesus said, you see, he said beautiful things, but he didn't have the time to explain. There's no time. That poor man, according to the scriptures, whenever he opened his mouth, the Jews were after his blood. Stone him. Want to kill him. Stone him. And he's running. He's running. He's hiding. A man in such a situation, he's got no time to tell you the whole truth. So he says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak from himself. But what things shall he hear, that shall he speak. As Allah, our Nabi is made to say, wa ma yantik wa anil hawa. He does not speak from his own desire. In huwa illa wa yuha. It is no less than an inspiration sent down to him. Allamahu shadidul kuwa. He is taught by one mighty in power. Then he will testify of me, the spirit of truth. He will, he will bear witness of me. He will testify of me, talking about me. Who did that? In the history after Jesus, who testified, bore testimony that Jesus Christ was a true messenger of God, that he was the Messiah, he was born miraculously, his mother was a virtuous woman, she was a saintly woman, he gave life to the dead by God's permission, he healed those born blind and the lepers by God's permission. Who said that? It's our Nabi Karim, this spirit of truth, this prophet of truth, he testified and because of him there are a thousand million Muslims today without any kind of convincing we accept that Hazrat Isa alayhi salam was the Masihullah, he is Rasulullah, he is Ruhullah, he is the word of Allah, he is the word of Allah and so on and so on we accept. And he is the greatest benefactor of Jesus, this comforter. He is giving comfort to his mother, comfort to Jesus because there is nobody besides in the Holy Quran, it is something that we should check up, read, study, memorize, and show it to our Christian fellow countrymen. There are people who are working with you. People are working for you. Call them. The people that come along from the outside, you know, the European, talk to him. He says, you know, we believe in Jesus. Of course, 
at first hand, they are suspicious. They think now you, maybe you want something from them. You want a curry favor with them. Maybe you want a cigarette. Maybe you want some chocolates from them. What do you want? Why do you say you believe in Jesus? He says, you know what my book says? He says, no. And if you have taken a little trouble to check up in the Quran, like Surah Ali Imran, the birth of Jesus. In this book, in this encyclopedia, the one I'm talking about by Abdullah Yusuf Ali, in the index you see Jesus. And you see there, first reference, a righteous prophet, Allah is such a Nabi. Chapter 6, verse 85. Number two, second reference, his birth, Padaish Kabayan. Chapter 3, verses 42 onwards. Chapter 19, verses 23 onwards. Take a little trouble, check up these verses, memorize them. Like for example, verse 42. So why is qalatil malaikatu ya Maryamu? So behold, the angel said, O Mary, inna Allah hastafaki wa tahharaki wa stafaki ala nisa ala alameen. That God Almighty has chosen thee, purified thee, chosen thee above the women of all nations. Nations. Tell them, this is what my book says. And when I'm talking, that this is Islam. Islam is making me to say that. This is not Christianity. I'm not talking Christianity. This is Islam. That he gave life to the dead by Allah's permission is in the Quran. That he is the word which Allah bestowed upon Mary is in the Quran. This is my book. I'm talking about my book. I'm talking about my deen. But when I'm giving reference to said, look at this man. Where did this man get it? He says, Maryam a.s. was a woman chosen above the women of all nations. I'm asking, why would an Arab go out of his way to tell other Arabs that the Jewess, the mother of Jesus, she was chosen above the women of all nations? Why would he do a thing like that, provoking his own people? When the Jews were looking down upon the Arabs for 3,000 years, they made insinuations that, you know, Ismail a.s. and his children are illegitimate. They said Hazrat Ibrahim a.s. had a wife, Sarah, was his legitimate wife. And then he took to himself a born woman, a slave woman, a londi, Bibi Hajra. She was actually a princess of Egypt. But the Christians and the Jews say that she was a born woman, londi thi londi. And as such, her children are worthless, rubbish, illegitimate. They call them Hagarines. The Jews and the Christians call the Bani Ismail Hagarines. And they call Islam Hagarism, the religion followed by the children of Hagar, Hajar, Bibi Hajar. They say Hagar. And they are still looking down upon the Arab brothers, the cousins, who the Jews. And yet this Arab is made to say that Maryam alayhi salam, the mother of Jesus, she was chosen above the women of all nations. I say account for that. Account for that. Was he mad? They said no. He was a mighty genius. There are people and people from different angles. They say Muhammad was the greatest man that ever lived. The most influential man in history, says Michael H. Hart. The greatest leader of all times, says Jews Masraman. And on and on. You see what the enemies have to say. La Martin, he says the greatest man that ever lived is Muhammad. And this, this man is making a thousand million Muslims today to accept Jesus Christ as one of the mightiest messengers of God. If he's not the comforter, What is difficult for you to accept about this man? What is it? This book of his, this book of authority, this Burhan, the Christian's Burhan, the Bible, it gives them a test. In the first epistle of John, chapter 4, verse 1, to find out whether the man is a man of God or not, they have the test in their own book. First epistle of John, chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. A false prophet is a false spirit, a true prophet is a true spirit. That is the language of the Bible. How do we know the true from the false? He says, the spirit that confesseth that Jesus is the Christ is of God. Jo Nabi kahega ki Hazrat Isa salam is Masih. He is from God, says the Bible. What does he say? What does our Nabi Karim say? He is made to say. Again, chapter 3, verse number 45. 
So why is qalatil malaikatu ya Maryamu? So behold the angel said, O Mary, inna Allaha yubashiruki bi kalimatim minhu that Allah gives you glad tidings of a word from him. Is muhul masih. His name will be the Messiah, masih. Translated Christ, is muhul masih. Who is abnu Maryama? Jesus, the son of Mary, wajihan fi dunya wal akhira, held in honor in this world and in the hereafter. Wa min al muqarrabin, and of the company of those nearest to God. Wa yukallimun nasa, and he will speak to the people. Fil mahdi wa kahlan, in childhood and in maturity. Wa min al salihin, and he shall be of the company of the righteous. Testification that Isa is Masih. He is the word which Allah gave upon Mary. This is Islam I'm talking. Brothers, I'm not talking Christianity. This is Islam. But this part of Islam, for a thousand years, we don't touch it. We read it all right, alhamdulillah. But we don't expound it. Look at this. Come, call them, show them, give them our teas, samosas, bhajjas. Khilao unko. Or usko batao ke dekho kya hai. If you can't read it off from your head, open the book. They have a translation. Open the book. Chapter 3, verse 42. Ke tum padho. Read it. But if you can read it in Arabic, and if you can give the translation, there are good people among them, sincere people, you find tears well up in their eyes. And Allah describes them as people who are faith. Even among the Jews and the Christians, there are people, good people. Allah says, Min humul mu'minuna, in ki andar mu'min log hai, mu'min. Among the Jews and the Christians. Wa aksaru humul fasikun, but the majority of them are perverted transgressors, fasik log hai. But there are good people among them. So what we do, we have to approach them, show them, we assume that each and every one is good. If he is a rebellious transgressor, if he wants to put up a fight, then there are other means of dealing with him. And for that, a booklet has been given to you all. A booklet is the Bible, God's word. Now that deals with the Farsic people, how to deal with them. The other one, the good man, you assume everyone is good, open the book. Give them your tea, samosas, your curry and rice. Wallah, it can do the job. Your curry and rice. Your Pakistani khana hai, you know. Everybody gets enslaved to it. Allah ne usme koi dala hai uske andar. You know, we have acquired it. I know in my country, the African loves it. The color, the mixture between black and white, they love it. The other Indians, the Madrasis, they love it. And the white man, he hogs it. He can't resist. He eats like a hog. Our food. This is it. Man, I say, you can enslave people with food. Sure, give you compassion, your hospitality. Call them, talk to them. And inshallah, if we are, they are not converted, at least the resistance, the enmity will go. But we have to start using this one third of the Quran, which we are not using up till now. For a thousand years, we haven't done it. In Egypt, for 1,400 years, there are millions of Copts, Coptic Christians. The Muslims didn't do the job. In the Lebanon, for 1,400 years, the Christians are there. We didn't do the job. In our midst here, there are 100,000 or more Christians in Karachi, more than 100,000 in, in Multan, more than 100,000 in Lahore, more than 200,000 in Sialkot. Talk to them, man. Talk to them. Show them. Share with them what Allah has given us. With these words, I say, my dear brothers and sisters, you see, our Nabi Karim sallam, is the natural successor to Hazrat Isa salam, in the fulfillment of prophecies and the fulfillment of his teachings. Jazakallah for this wonderful opportunity. I will now request Brother Didat to come and kindly answer the questions. My name is Vaseem Sharif. You have just mentioned in your lecture that uh, about the paraclet, I wanted to ask that uh, Mr. Bill Christ uh, replied that the paraclet is the Holy Spirit which goes inside you. Uh, doesn't it mean that it's a devil or something and they are worshipping devil? and it has led them uh, to alcoholism and uh, incest and all the rubbish things. So what do you say about that? You see, we must be a little more charitable. We, we will not say the devil. These are human beings. You can work yourself into any psychological attitude. Hallucinations do take place. People, they get possessed with certain ideas and they go into frenzies. But 
we have been discussing that this was supposed to be a prophecy and if the word was a parakletos or perikletos, Jesus Christ didn't speak Greek. So we have to go back what was the original word and we reason and we have been proving to our listeners if they are Christians that that person, comforter or parakletos or whatever you say is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa My name is Vakar Ahmad Kadri. Uh, Mr. Didat, I would like to ask a very uh, little uh, peculiar question. And that is that, as you have said in your just uh, this speech, the Hadrat Musa alayhi salam and Hadrat Isa alayhi salam foretold the appearance of Hadrat Muhammad, peace be upon him. I had happened to have uh, gone through some literatures of Buddha who taught Buddhism and some also Hindu, uh, I mean, gave the tenets of Hinduism and all that. So in their literature also there are few things given for the emergence of Hazrat Muhammad peace be upon him. And in Buddhism they have also, I mean the Buddha has himself maybe or maybe some of his compatriots uh, gave the even the confined place where the Hazrat Muhammad's emergence was possible or his existence was possible after a certain limited time or all that. So could you a little bit comment upon these? Yes. yes. You see, there, there are so many prophecies. Prophecy is Basharat. We are told that it's the, in the Buddhist scripture is there, in the Hindu scripture is there, in the Jewish scripture is there, in the Christian scripture is there. But instead of making generalizations, what we were trying to do was, we were restricting ourselves and said, look, pick up a verse and expound that verse. It is far more profitable than say, look, man, you know, Buddhist scripture may have, and I give you a few words here and a few from the Hindu scripture and a few from the words of Moses and a few from the words of Jesus. What will you remember? Therefore, I singled out one thing at a time. Anything. If you want to prove your case, get one point and prove that instead of making sweeping generalization there are and there are people where there is need be if you have buddhist in your surroundings master the buddhist scripture if there are hindus this is the unfortunate part is that the hindus they know nothing about their own scriptures see in my country especially where i come from the majority of the people are hindus of the people from the Indo-Pakistan subcontinent, the majority are Hindus. And if you ask any Hindu whether he's seen the Ramayana, he hasn't. Has he seen the Bhagavad Gita? He hasn't. Has he seen the Vedas? He hasn't. Now there's no sense in you telling him that in the Vedas, the Rig Veda, in the Upanishads, ye likha hai, wo likha hai. I said, you're wasting time. Go straight to the point with these people on a different level, something that the guy can understand, instead of giving him references about which he knows nothing. Let him ask and then. Excuse Next. me, there is also a microphone provided in the ladies' enclosure. Ladies, if they wish to have any question, they are welcome. After the question down here, the ladies may come and take the mic. Christians believe that MC is still alive and staying on the sky. Christians believe that has. My name is Nasir Ahmed. Nasir Ahmed. Nasir Ahmed. Christians believe that the Messiah is still alive and is staying on the sky and Muslims have also the same belief. Is it true according to Quran because Christians give it a point that is of his priority upon other prophets and his godness? You see, it's very very easy to deal with the Christian point by point, whatever he claims, you can give him proof from his own book that this does not make Jesus superior to other prophets. With regards to the idea that he is a Masih, we can show him what Masih means. It's not what he's thinking. Masih doesn't mean God. Then with regards to the idea that he is in heaven and is coming back. So right he's coming back. So if that makes him superior to the other prophets, including our own, then he says, you see, Elijah, Elijah in the Old Testament, it tells us that without dying, he was taken up by a whirlwind into heaven. Whirlwind into heaven without dying. And is there for some 4,000 years. 
So a person without dying, if he is in heaven for 4,000 years, he's superior to a person who's there for 2,000 years, who was supposed to have died and he came back to life. According to the Christian belief that he died and he came back to life. This man, without dying, Allah took him up and is coming back. Elijah is in the Holy Bible. So that means now if this is the standard of judging, then Elijah is far superior to Jesus. Yes. Any ladies have a direct question? Wait. Sir, I wanted to ask you about the uh, there's a concept in there's a concept in Islam that uh, Isa al Salam is going to come back again, not in the form of a, as a prophet. So I was just wondering if you could also. I mean, what, what is your comment about it? Because this thing has resulted in a great division. And there's a new sect which has emerged, which is MDR. So could you please comment about it? Yes. Whatever that MBS is, I don't know. But however, you see, Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, when he comes back, he was a prophet. You can't take the title away from him. He was the Masih, you can't take the title away from him. But he is not coming as a prophet. He is like a person, let's say a person is ruling this country, a king. That king abdicates. And there is another king now ruling in his stead. When that king returns to his kingdom, what is he coming as a king or as a subject of the ruler? He is a subject. So similarly, if Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, when he comes, he is not coming as a prophet to give directives to people because that directive is already completed in the Holy Quran. So he will come as a follower of the teachings of our Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi salam. Uh, wait, brother, there's a written question here from the ladies. I'm asked to read it out and answer it. It says here, is there any hukum in Bible for Ahle Kitab that they have to observe Parda, please read for me. Ruqayya Shakil. With regards to Parda, as, what do you understand by Parda? You see, Jesus Christ, what he said was that whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her had committed adultery with her already in his heart. That means in his Sharia, people were not supposed to look at women with lustful intent. In Islam, Allah Bari Ta'ala tells in the Holy Quran that when you see a woman, you cast down your looks. To the man, so when you see the woman, when you see the man, you cast down your looks. In other words, you don't feast upon men or upon women. This is the teaching of Islam. Jesus said, you must not lust, to look to lust. Islam says, when you see, you cast down your looks. I hope that answers your question. Yes, my sir. He was the name. Uh, my question is regarding the, the topic that you discussed a bit earlier. Uh, in this country, when we're living in the subcontinent especially, you know, we are, we are dealing with the people which are usually of the Hindu origin, right? Uh, we don't really tackle a lot of uh, Christians around. So, I mean, so much for the atheists, they don't even uh, believe in anything. But what about the pantheists, you know? They uh, do believe in the gods, right? But how can you confer upon them? that uh, there is something like a prophet, first of all, and that all the religions, if you lo look upon them, you can one thing, uh, consider one thing, that they are generated around one personality, it's just like leaderships in the governments and all that. So if all the religions are to be surrounded around one person, how is it that that, that person has not created the religion instead of being conferred by the God upon it? Can you answer this question of mine? You see, you ramble so much that I don't know now what is actually you want from me. Please, if you can put forth, forward a straightforward just question without rambling, I might be able to grasp what you want and I'll give it to you. Yes, my question is that how do we know that the Prophet is a real messenger of God instead of a self-created image before the people? The self-created image before the people. What are you referring to? Just like, you know, the, all the Prophets that you see, you know, I mean, there was nothing to prove that they were right, except for that, what they said that they were right, right? No, not right. Okay. You see, <laughs> that's not right. Okay. We believe that God Almighty appoints, appoints His messengers. Right. 
And in that system of appointing prophets, we have so many names given to us in the Bible as well as in the Quran. We believe that Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, Moses was appointed by God. Correct. Daud alayhi salam by God. Suleiman alayhi salam by God. Isa alayhi salam by God. The Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam by God. So they were appointed by God. They didn't make themselves into prophets. That he said, now look, I think I have qualified now. I've been to a university or a Darul Ulum, and now today I can claim to be a prophet. That wasn't so. You see, that is not the system. The system is God appoints his messengers. So in that system, every nation has had a prophet, says the Holy Quran. And there never was a people without a warner having been sent amongst them. And to every nation a guide. A guide, a warner has been sent to all peoples. But now when this messenger of God comes, one certificate he has is that he's got no selfishness. He is not doing things, he is not teaching things so he can benefit from them in any way, materially. He is interested in the welfare. But mankind has a tendency to create legends around these personalities. And had it not been for the Holy Quran, testifying and verifying that some of these personalities mentioned in the Christian Bible, whom we accept as the messengers of God, like Hazrat Dawud alayhi salam the Holy Prophet David, Hazrat Suleiman alayhi salam, the Holy Prophet Solomon. When we look at these prophets, and Lut alayhi salam, the Prophet Lot, we accept them as God's messengers, and we as Muslims, we believe that they were sinless. They were sinless. All the prophets, wherever they came, because if God Almighty chooses his representative, if I choose my representative in my material uh, welfare in my businesses, I look for a perfect person that I can get. Honest person, upright person, hardworking person. If God Almighty chooses, He is going to choose the most moral of people. So, now that is the principle the Muslim accepts that every nation has, a, has had a prophet and every prophet was sinless. Now when we read the stories woven around the prophets, if it was not for the Quran testifying about the veracity, we Muslims would never accept them. Like for example, Lut alayhi salam, the prophet Lot. According to the Jewish record, the Bible, the Christian Bible, Lot committed incest with his daughters night after night. You know that? Do you know that? No. But suppose now, you, people tell you that Lut alayhi salam was a messenger of God. Allah saved him, you know, from that destruction, what he destroyed his people, Sodom and Gomorrah. But this man who was saved from that destruction, he goes and cohibits with his daughters night after night. Would you accept him as a prophet? No, no. Can you see that? But because the Quran says they are sinless, we say these are stories concocted around the messengers of God. Hazrat Dawud alayhi salam, the holy prophet David. According to the Bible, he sees Bathsheba, somebody else's wife. You know, from, the, from his palace roof, he sees somewhere on another roof lower down, a woman bathing naked. And she was very beautiful to look at. So, he is enamored by her. So, he sends his secretary, his ministers ago, bring that certain woman. And he finds out that she was menstruating. He said, look, when you cleanse yourself, then he cohibits with her. And after some time, she comes and reports that, look, I'm carrying your baby. In the meantime, the husband of this woman is at war with the Palestinians, the Philistines. So, Hazrat Dawud has that man called. According to the Bible, this is all what I'm reading from the Bible. He has that man called Uriah by name. That's also in the Bible, Uriah. He calls him and, you know, says, look, man, he makes him drunk and feeds him, thinking that this guy, after all that a night of, you know, eating and drinking, he will go back to his house and probably he will sleep with his wife. So it will be made known that, look, this child that this woman is carrying is from her husband. But this Uriah, this officer, was so good. He, had such, he was so conscientious, a soldier of Israel, that he wouldn't go home. He said, my companions are out in the field, they are dying, and me, I'm going to enjoy with my wife. He said, never. So he stayed behind at the palace. He wouldn't go to his own house. So now what to do? 
because sooner or later they're going to discover that Uriya is away for a long time and his wife is now carrying a baby. The rumor will go out that this child is an illegitimate child. And then they'll want to know who, who, who. And a finger might be pointed to David. It says David is responsible for her condition. So according to the Bible, Hazrat Dawud alayhi salam, he writes a letter, seals it and gives it to Uriya. So give it to your commander, hire up, hire up. And in the letter he wrote, put this guy in the thickest of battle that he can't come out alive. And so he does. And the man dies. He's killed. So Hazrat Dawud alayhi salam, according to the Bible, was an adulterer, fornicator, haram, and a murderer. Now such a man, will you accept him as a prophet of God? He says, no. But you see, because the Quran testifies that all the prophets are sinless, we say, look, these are the stories of the Jews against their own people. Suleiman alayhi salam, he had 1,000 wives and concubines. In his old age, he made a temple for the worship of idols. Will you accept such a man as a prophet? No. Can you see that? Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, he insulted his mother. He insulted the elders of his people. Will you accept him as a man of God? And the Bible says, he says, he says, he is described as a gluttonous eater and a wine bibber. Pitta. The Bible says that. Will you accept him as a prophet of God? He says, no. Now you see, no. So we said, look, these are the legends created around people. Similar thing could have happened to the Hindu heroes. It could have happened. They were good people. But the legends that have grown, we will reject them, reject them. So we accept those that I mentioned in the Quran as prophets and sinless. But the principle we accept that every nation has had a prophet. And these prophets before our Nabi, our Nabi is Khatamun Nabi, and he's the last of the prophets. There shall be no prophet after him. Dr. Anwar Ahmad, I want to know whether in an Islamic state, the free propagation of other religions is allowed or not. Uh, whether the free propagation, the practice of religion in Islam, sit down, sit down, sit down. The practice of religion, Islam gives you freedom to practice your religion. Everybody is freedom. Allah tells us in the Holy Quran, it's a la ikraha fi deen. There is no compulsion in religion. We have no right to force Islam down anybody's throats. So in other words, if the guy is a Buddhist, he can practice his Buddhism, Hinduism, whatever ism, he can practice. But it is our duty to guide them, to call them. Allah is telling us to call them all to the way of your Lord. So, ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati. Invite all, all. Whether they be Hindus, Jews, Christians, atheists, agnostics, Buddhists, whatever. Invite all to the ways of thy Lord with wisdom. Well, mawazatil hasanat and with beautiful preaching. Wajadilhum billati ahsan and reason with them in the ways that are best and most gracious. This is our duty. Freedom of religion allowed, but we can't force our religion down people's throats. Uh, there is a question here. It says here, what was the actual word uttered by Jesus for comforter? By Mr. Khalid Niaz is asking this question. See, the actual word, the Quran says, Mimbada ismuhu Ahmad. A messenger coming after me whose name shall be Ahmad. But in the Christian scriptures, in the tradition, they have lost it utterly. So they got 2,000 different names. So only thing left for us to do is now to reason, to deduce, which we have been doing all along. The word there is not to be found. There is no word uttered by Jesus which is recorded. The, question from the ladies are asking him. Yes, where? Asalaamu As Alaikum. Uh, I wanted to ask you a question about, uh, concerning the Holy Trinity. Uh, the, the Father, the Son and the Word. I know we don't believe in it. Wrong, and I know we don't believe in it now. But the Christian argues, why is it so difficult for us to believe in it? Like everything has three dimensions: like uh, left side of the person, the right side of the person, and the front. There are three different aspects, aspects of the same thing. I know it's wrong, but uh, what do I say? What's the answer to, to this? So Are there three different aspects of the same thing? Right. Let us see now what they say. You see, I had a phone call this afternoon. A Mrs. Fernandez. Mrs. Fernandez, she says, last night she saw that TV program of mine. 
and whole night she couldn't sleep. <laughs> so I'm asking her, what did I say that you take exception to? So she said, you said, I can't remember, but she said, I'm not denying it. She said, I said that the Christians are worshipping Jesus as God. That's what I had said, supposed to have said. I can't remember what I said, but she said, and I'm prepared to agree that I could have said that. That the Christians are worshipping Jesus as God. That he is their God. So she says, no, he is not God. He is only a prophet of God, like Muhammad. So I said, look, there's no problem then. Between you and me, there is no problem because we also believe that Jesus was a mighty messenger of God. Not just a prophet, but a great prophet. Like Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa But I said, what church do you belong to? So she said, she is a Roman Catholic. So I said, look, if you are a Roman Catholic, then you believe in the Holy Trinity. So she said, yes. See, without knowing that, you can't argue with people. She says, you are attributing to Christians that we say Jesus is God. And he says, Jesus is not God. That means, I said, look, what church? She said, Roman Catholic. I said, if you are a Roman Catholic, I said, that means you believe in the Holy Trinity. She said, yes. So I said, in your catechism, in your book of instructions, it says that the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Ghost is God. But they are not three gods, but one God. I said, is that right? She said, yes. I said, your book continues, your catechism. It says, the Father is Almighty, the Son is Almighty, and the Holy Ghost is Almighty. But there are not three Almighties, but one Almighty. Is that what it says? She said, yes. I said, it continues. The Father is a person, the Son is a person, and the Holy Ghost is a person. But there are not three persons, but one person. Does it say that? She said, yes. So I said, that is what I'm telling you. That look, this is <laughs> the is most nonsensical thing you are saying. Person, person, person. But not three person, but one person. What language is that? That's not English. Can you see? It's very easy just to say bamboozle people. You see, look, we get bamboozled. You know, we get bluffed. The person is speaking English and she's speaking meticulous English. This lady. She's speaking beautiful English, you know, she's got control over the language, but now when I'm asking a simple basic question, person, 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 but you say not three persons, but one person. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? No, it doesn't. So you say you believe that the Father is there, the Son is there, and the Holy Ghost is there. They believe that at the beginning which had no beginning, you know, at the very beginning, when Allah, before He created anything, the Father was there, the Son was there, and the Holy Ghost was there. I said, how many were there? No, no, your mind. What does your mind say? You say, the Father was there, the Son was there, and the Holy Ghost was there. They are co-equal and co-eternal. See, once you know what they are talking about, they say they are co-equal, means there is no superiority of one over the other. And they are co-eternal. At the beginning, which had no beginning, they were all there. I said, how many were there? Three. Can you see that? Three. So I said, you believe in three gods? She said, no, I believe in one God. <laughs> so the thing is this now, we, we can just talk, you know, I said, now somehow, another Christian analogy was given. He says, you see, you have three cups of water. Three cups of water, and you put them into one bigger cup, so it's all one water. So they watered down the Trinity. They watered it down. But I said, now look, the Father, the Father, when they say in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. This is the formula. This is the formula of faith. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. When you say that, when you repeat that, how many pictures you see in your head? See, I asked the, this Christian who's talking to you. He said, look, when you say in the name of the Father, are you thinking of the Son? And when you say and the Son, are you thinking of the Holy Ghost? No, unless the mind is twisted, is diseased. You can say, yeah, you see the same. When you say the Father, you think of the Son. And when you say the Son, you think of the Holy Ghost. When you say the Holy Ghost, you think of the Father. When you say your husband, you think of your Son. And when, what's wrong with you? Look.
The thing is now when words, when you use father, father looks different in your mind, son looks different in your mind, the Holy Ghost looks different in your mind. And they can, you can never superimpose these three mental pictures and create one. There will ever be three in your mind. So this is a fallacy and Allah tells us very simple language. He says, Wala takulu salasa. Don't say Trinity. In tahu khair lakum. This is stop it, it'll be better for you. In Allah will wahid. For your Allah is one Allah, is not three in one, is not one in three. And this Trinity is nowhere in the Bible. Is nowhere in his Bible. Whether Roman Catholic or Protestant, the word Trinity you will never find in any Bible in the world. The word Trinity, this is the foundation of Christianity. That word you'll never find in any Bible in the world. Amazing. So they say, we believe what we want to believe. I say, you have the privilege. That's your privilege. You can deny God if you like. Allah gives you that privilege. There's one thing he will not control is your mind. He gives you freedom. Think as you like. You want to abuse him, swear him, go ahead. He gives you that freedom. But it's the most nonsensical idea, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost put together are not three but one. Yes, Chacha. Saint Kapadia. To elaborate the question put by Dr. Anwar, if I mistake not, Shariat of Musa alayhi salam ended when Isa alayhi salam came, and Shariat of Isa alayhi salam ended, and all Shariats ended when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam was declared as a prophet. As per the statement given by you through the Bible, and I, what I have been able to understand, all these Christians from the stated by the Bible are pastors. So I would like to put this question to you, Dr. Amasab, that uh, should an Islamic state like Pakistan permit bastards to create bastards and bastards? Should they be permitted to create bastards and bastards? Should they? Missionary should not be closed down altogether because as a Muslim we are supposed to, I mean, give sermons for doing good things and we are supposed to stop it by hand. Iman, as we say, has got three stages. Stop it by hand, if not by mouth, if not feel in your heart that it is wrong. We as a Muslim state and one of the most Muslim, I mean, biggest one of the Muslim state and that we have got so much of religion in our Islam, India and Pakistan. We, Pakistan being a Muslim state, should put a ban on creating bastards in this country. Yes, my son. Go ahead. My name is Faisal Daher. In your previous lecture, uh, you were answering to someone from the ladies and you said, uh, uh, I don't remember your exact words, but you said something that there are things that even God can't do. And an example to that you said, for example, he cannot create another God and uh, he cannot kick me out of his kingdom. Well, if this is the case, then uh, how will you interpret uh, this uh, verse from the Holy Quran where Allah Marit Allah is telling us that in Allah ala kulli shayin qadir. I don't know the translation in English, but in Urdu it means ke beshak so, you know, if I am talking to a Christian uh, that uh, look, there are certain things that even God can't do and I give your examples, he might ask me the question, are you contradicting your own Holy Quran? Look, your Holy Quran is saying that in Allah ala kulli shayin qadir, but you are saying that your God can't do certain things. So, how would I answer him? You answer him by asking him, can your God create another God? Can your God, his God, the God he believes in, he is the uncreated. He said, yes. The Father is uncreated. He is the Father. They talk about the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. The Father is uncreated. Can he create another uncreated? Alas, that's the answer. My, qu my question is about the principle given by Islam concerning the marriage of girls. As in our society, mostly it happens that the parents choose such and such a person for their daughter and pressurize her to marry him because they think he can provide her with all the worldly things. And she, being under pressure, keeps quiet 
even if she does not want to marry him, either out of obedience or love for her parents. Is this pressure by the parents right, or is this muteness of daughter right? Will you please enlighten me on this? Thank you. No, this is un-Islamic. No man has a right to force another human being, his daughter or his sister, into marriage with somebody else that she is not happy about. No man has a right. 